On D-Day, the Queen's beloved father, King George VI, delivered a stirring national address. That day, he said, after nearly five years of toil and suffering, we must renew that crusading impulse on which we entered the war and met its darkest hour. Our fight is against evil and for a world in which goodness and honor may be the foundation of the life of men in every land. This evening, we thank God for the brave sons of the United Kingdom and the United States who defeated the Nazis and the Nazi regime and liberated millions from tyranny. The bond between our nations was forever sealed in that great crusade. As we honor our shared victory and heritage, we affirm the common values that will unite us long into the future. Freedom, sovereignty, self-determination, the rule of law, and reference for the rights given to us by Almighty God. From the Second World War to today, Her Majesty has stood as a constant symbol of these priceless traditions. She has embodied the spirit of dignity, duty, and patriotism that beats proudly in every British heart. On behalf of all Americans, I offer a toast to the eternal friendship of our people, the vitality of our nations, and to the long-cherished and truly remarkable reign of Her Majesty the Queen. On that day, and on many occasions since, the armed forces of both our countries fought side by side to defend our cherished values of liberty and democracy. Mr. President, in your State of the Union address this year, you paid tribute to some of the American heroes who risked their lives. And we owe an immeasurable, inimmeasurable debt to the British, American, and Allied soldiers who began the liberation of Europe on the 6th of June, 1944. I paid my first state visit to your country at the invitation of President Eisenhower. As Supreme Allied Commander, he had ultimate responsibility for the execution of the Normandy landings. In his headquarters in St. James's Square, not far from Buckingham Palace, British and American officers worked closely together to plan the freedom of a continent. And it would be no exaggeration to say that millions of lives depended on their common endeavour. And with your own Scottish ancestry, Mr. President, you too have a particular connection to this country. We are also bound by the strength and breadth of our economic ties as the largest investors in each other's economies. British companies in the United States employ over one million Americans, and the same is true vice versa. Mr. President, as we look to the future, I'm confident that our common values and shared interests will continue to unite us.